Welcome and uh, hello everyone. Today is the 29th of June 2018 and um, I'm speaking here on behalf of uh, UCLAN, the University of Central Lancashire for the Guinevere uh, project, um, an EU funded uh, project and we are happy to have Brandt Knudsen here as our presenter. Brandt has been doing research on the use of Second uh, Life Virtual World for uh, education since 2008 and he's currently investigating the roles of virtual identity and social constructivism and he's um, actually developed and manages three full regions in Second Life. One is the uh, Hong Kong University Medicine Island, Hong Kong University uh, Education Island and the Lingnan University Drama Island and this is where I believe we are working on and from. So I think uh, you have much more uh, to tell about that than I can do in this very short time and uh, you don't have to read it as I do because you can speak freely. So the floor is yours and thank you very much. Okay, well thank you for the kind introduction, Chris. Welcome everybody. Um, as Chris was saying, uh, my, my role here is uh, as a researcher. I'm uh, building a, a representation of Venice and my, uh, my goal is to research collaborative learning and collaborative strategies um, in the virtual world with a focus on how people use the virtual identity and how they can uh, implement uh, and develop knowledge um, on the idea around the idea of con social constructivism. So uh, the idea um, basically developed from uh, the Quest, I don't know, has anybody ever been to The Quest? It was a medieval village with a series of uh, 10 challenges. And then after 10 challenges, I asked people to fill out the survey. And if they did, I would give them the access to the amazing 11th level, which was uh, mostly underwater, the, uh, the underwater world of the lost pirates. Um, and I, I had about... Um, 20% of the people um, do my survey, um, but a lot of people um, answered their questions looking at their general, like, general attitude towards Second Life while I want them to focus on specific behaviors that they just went through. So my idea here with uh, Venice, as we uh, get started there, is that it um, you have a, one experience, one gamified educational activity, and then you immediately are surveyed on it. And in order to get access to the next level, you have to do the survey. So that way I incentivize um, the survey. Let's see if I can. Is that better? Better, Heike? OK, great. Um, so the idea with the um, gamified education and its uh, it's integrated with Moodle so that I can be sure that one, I get consent to participate, they have a gamified experience, they're surveyed on what they just experienced before they can go on to the next level, they have another gamified experience, and then they're surveyed on that, and eventually I'd like to have a whole series of, of gamified experiences with survey items that focus on those behaviors so that people will be answering, um, responding to items, based on their experience that they just had. Not an not a attitude towards an object, but an attitude towards a behavior. Um, this is based on a uh, theory that uh, Davis used for the technology acceptance model. OK, well, I will now share my screen. Uh, does anybody have any questions so far? And I will turn off my webcam and share my screen. Okay, and move this over there. All righty. So we should all be um, seeing my shared screen. We're on a uh, schooner, the Ernestina, and it's a rainy night here with a full moon. Um, you should be able to see it in the Adobe Connect shared screen, or if you're in Second Life, you can just... Uh, Focus on that and just uh, use the Adobe Connect for audio. 
Okay, so is everybody in? How students participate, react in a game comparison with real experience? Um, well, I try to make the experience here as authentic as possible so that they're immersed and engaged. Um, the idea is to create an environment that's sticky and compelling um, and exciting and engaging. Um, gamified education, um, the biggest trick is to make it fun. So you try to tap into intrinsic motivation. Um, we'll see one here shortly when we get to the pirate ship battle, the thrill of shooting and blowing things up. So it's a rather um, basic intrinsic skill, but the idea is to develop um, camera controls. That's the, the objective. And I can share um, more information about this game. I, you were sent the link for the roles, which I'll put into chat. Uh, the Adobe link. Uh, yes. Chris, can you share that link to the Adobe Connect? Or I will. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, in chat, Val, there's the link to the room. You can join and hear using that. All right, so um, I'll also share the link to the Google document, which has a lot of information about the uh, roles. And I can put that on the screen here, so just briefly we can look at that. So if everybody sees that now, uh, the agency and exploration of gamified education. Mission one is the pirate ship battle. And there's some story here and the roles. And you'll see a lot of this repeated um, in the Moodle course as we progress through. So if everybody um, is in the Moodle course, then they should uh, click on the consent to participate in this research. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, so you should see this Moodle course here and a consent to participate in the research study. Now, because it's adapted from Moodle, it's just a single item uh, quiz question. And if you pass the quiz by saying yes, then you get to, your, to the demographic survey, which asks you your background information, where you're from, age, things like that, so what geographical area you're from. And when those are completed, then you'll be able to go into the pirate ship battle and look at the, a basic tutorial for camera point of view, uh, pick up the context of the game. Um, and then you can watch a little video clip about the Mad Coon Strikes. And finally, it'll give you the link to come to where you're at now. So um, if you want to progress through there now, or we can just go for a walk, what would you like to do? It depends on how much of a, a, a real run through in this game. Definitely we're looking for engagement, trying to maximize engagement. All right, let's go for um, a walk. So um, you, you, if you guys ever heard of a trust fall, right, where you fall backwards into the arms of the people near you, um, okay, Susanna, that's okay. You can just watch um, on the shared screen. You should see it now in Adobe Connect. Chris, you still, still see the shared screen of um, Second Life? Okay, good. All right, so everybody, if you could turn and look at my avatar. Everybody see me, Anne and Letty and Kaylee and, and, and Val, welcome. And Kaylee, everybody turn and look at me. Now what I'm going to do here is jump overboard. That's the first step. We're going to jump off into the ocean. So it's a bit of trust here. You won't drown. You won't get lost. Just jump right here into the ocean. Great. Everybody in? I don't know if Val can hear me yet. Val, can you hear me? We're going to jump into the ocean and walk along to the pirate area. Anne and Bethany. OK, good. All right, everybody, we're going to uh, walk the ocean side, yeah? Everybody see where I'm walking? We're going to walk this way. 
Yes, Bethany, we jump overboard. So it's a bit of a trust leap here. Now the idea of the background, if you go through the Moodle courses, we are sneaking. We've been, we've been secretly brought to Venice um, and we're sneaking in. Uh, we're time travelers trying to undo a time diversion. There's a little video that shows that. Is everybody over here off the ship? Uh, okay, T Heike wants a TP, offer teleport. Okay, is everybody with me? All right, let's see if Heike can join us. All right, let's sneak along here through the fog and the rain, kind of skulking along, right? We're not accepted members of this society. We're outsiders. We're trying to sneak along. Unfortunately, my peg leg is very noisy. <laughs> it's a handicap thing. All right, now here I'm going to peek around the corner, and you'll see there's a security guard there, so be quiet. Yeah, don't talk too loud, because the security guard is right there. And don't, <laughs> don't tap him on the shoulder. We still have a ways to walk. We have to sneak across here. Yep. Come on, Ann. This way. Well, that's interesting. Now, to me, we're missing a back wall there. It's the first time I've seen that. Everybody coming along? All right, hopefully the security guard won't uh, see us and, and raise the alarm. All right, we're coming to another place where there's a security guard, so be very, very quiet. <laughs> All right, we're going to sneak right through here. There's a secret door right through this wall, people. There we are. Everybody see that where I went? Yes, good. I'll come out again. Right here. See where I am? There we are. It's a secret room. That's a nice pirate outfit, Kaylee. Okay. So now we're in a, a secret room and we're supposed to uh, put on some pirate clothes, period appropriate. And you'll see up there at the top there's a... Um, uh, a, a blunderbuss pistol. I'm trying to remember where that gun came from. Oh well. Anyways, so I want I want them to get weapons. I want them to get pirate clothing. Try to fit in. So as we come out of this place, we're supposed to try to fit into the environment. And there's also a little uh, a TV screen here on the wall, and I can show this. You watch the TV screen. This is what happened on the pirate ship, which we're about to see. So this is the backstory. So there's the pirate. Looks a lot like my twin brother. Yes, I'm, I'm talking in Adobe Connect, but I don't want to talk in both sides because it seems to create a bit of a bit of an echo. Uh oh, he zapped. He zapped the captain. This is the time diversion. This is the mad coon. He's the um, is it protagonist? I forget the antagonist. He's causing a diversion in the timeline, and we're here as part of the agency to try to undo this damage. So this is a little video that's also available on the Moodle course, just to give a little backstory. Okay, uh, any questions so far? Is Laura here? She was asking. Yes, she is. Okay, is everybody with us? <laughs> All right. So hopefully um, we're ready to progress. Now normally I'd try to make sure everybody's in a pirate outfit, but that's okay. This is just a fun walkthrough. Excuse me, ladies. Right here is a little door right next to Laura. You see it looks like a little brick wall. And we'll sneak through the secret door. Most of the secret doors seem to come out in the bathroom. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because it's the one place you can hope for privacy. So this is supposed to be a, it's my version of a period bathroom. It's um, almost all this stuff is from Ali. I don't know if you know her work. So I've she put up tons of stuff on the marketplace for free, and I've tried to repurpose a lot of her stuff that she's uploaded. OK, 
Okay, so now we're um, pretending we're part of Venice, Venetian society. Um, you can see the canal going off there in the distance. And we are going to walk up this way. Now the sun's about to rise. It's dawn. Dawn is coming. So we'll walk up through here, pretending we're part of society now. We're supposed to be here. I'm thinking I will probably turn off flying eventually to make people feel more integrated with the game. Okay, there's Angelica. Thanks for coming, Angelica. Val's here, Letty, Heike. Anybody else not here? Maybe we need to TP a few people. Laura, maybe? Is she here? Laura's offline, I think. Ah, Laura's here. I'm. Okay, let's just talk in one place, Adobe Connect, if everybody's in there. Otherwise, we get a heck of an echo. There's Bethany. Okay, good. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes, fine. Okay. All right, let's uh, TP. Well, he can see my screen, right, in, in Adobe Connect? Yes. I can see the screen and see something. All right. Okay. Well, let's try to keep the group together. Um, this area right here I've developed fairly recently as kind of a tutorial on how the game is played and to start beginners on the idea of keyboard camera controls. Is everybody familiar with camera controls? So you hold down the Alt key. Yep. And you can zoom in. So that little white ship over there, if you hold down the Alt key and left click on the ship, you'll see it turns into a magnifying glass. And you can push the mouse forward and back. So your cursor becomes a magnifying glass. You can zoom in and out, left and right. And if you hold down your Control key, it gives you an Okay, so we have some land cannons here in front of us. Let's try clicking on the land cannons. You can see it makes a big boom and a lot of smoke. And look, the ship is smoking. Now if we zoom in on it, can anybody see how many life is left? It starts with 10 lives. Can anybody tell me how many lives are left if you zoom in? Seven. Yes, exactly. Seven lives are left. So there's 10 lives total. As the little ships take damage, they smoke, and then they catch fire. Now you can see the smoke is getting thicker and thicker. So it's a progressive damage. And now these land cannons can only fire every 15 seconds. Yeah, so how much life is left on that little boat now? Anybody see? Three. Yep. And now two. Oh, wow. And it's caught fire. So this is that intrinsic motivation of shooting things, blowing things up. It's a bit childish, but that's often where fun is found in sort of finding the inner child, appealing to the inner child, or at least the, the needs that people have. So it's full on in flame now. And one more shot, and it explodes. So that's the basic underlying mechanism for the little, the little ships. Now it'll be back in, in 60 seconds. So that's just a quick tutorial on um, camera controls. And the idea here is that I want people to learn camera controls, but I don't want to have to teach it over and over and over. So I've tried to automate the process and make it fun by building it into a game. And usually, you can't make you can't make the objectives too obvious. I'll scroll to where we can see some of those objectives. 
Um, objectives need to be somewhat indirect in order to maintain the sense of fun. If you make it very clearly, we're going to do this to get camera controls and probably won't be very fun. But if we do it to blow things up and we learn camera controls on the way, then that's kind of how you maintain fun and still keep the intrinsic motivation going towards an objective. So if you can see on my screen here, I'm sharing it where it talks about the game objectives, psychomotor, you know, basically learning how to use keyboard camera controls. And you start out with imitating someone and then manipulation, precision, articulation, naturalization, cognitive skills, what's the task. So your team has 60 seconds from the time the first target ship is destroyed to win the game. I do supply a discussion forum in Moodle so that help people uh, introduce themselves and form teams and exchange strategy ideas. Um, so hopefully, as you see when we get into the game, it's designed to be essentially impossible for an individual to win, but um, it is doable for a group. So that's my goal, is to make a difficult challenge that it requires a group to develop strategies, implement tactics in order to win. And that, that way I can ask them questions about the collaborative process and how um, this idea of social constructivism, the social construction of knowledge, um, plays a role. Also, virtual identity. That's why I ask you to uh, become, uh, look like the locals, act like the locals, try to fit in, period dress, um, because I want you to think about this, how your virtual identity can, can uh, influence your thinking. OK, for the next step, let's walk out on the dock. Just over here. Now, you'll notice there's a big ship here pretty close. And if I, I can demonstrate some of the cannons firing. So the cannons down low don't shoot very far. And the cannons a little higher up shoot farther. And the cannons up the highest on the ship shoot the farthest. And they shoot at different angles. Some go forward, like these are the forward cannons. And then you have the side cannons. Everybody see that, how it works? So we'll try that soon on the big ship that's moving around out there. OK, so let's continue on out here. Now, originally, I was going to do this in moonlight, but uh, it seemed a little bit difficult. So I thought maybe bringing up the sun would help shed some light on the, <laughs> on the goals and the issues. So right now, I have it at, at a coastal afternoon. So you can see the salute church there off in the distance on the right. And see the three little white ships? Those are three we need to sink. And then off to the left, there's three brown ships. And those are the other three. So there's a total of six little ships that need to be sunk in order to win the game and get the password that goes to the next level. It opens up Moodle to take you to the next level. Any questions? Sue's boots. Should I take a look? Where's Sue? <laughs> I don't even see. Oh, Sue knocked underneath the dress. <laughs> ah, some major bling. <laughs> Red with bling. OK. Well, you know, you're still rocking the look there. Got the big hair. Like a, a duchess, or a, definitely like a wig look. OK, so you see the big um, pirate ship out there. There's also some land cannons, um, a total of 52 scattered around the uh, sim. Can anybody camera control up to the Salute Church? You see the two land cannons mounted mm -hmm. about halfway up mm -hmm. the Salute Church. Can you fire one? if you? cam around the back of the land cannon, you can fire it. Can anybody fire one of those cannons? The yes, excellent. Now, they're all pre-aimed to shoot at the little brown ships, or depending where you're aiming at. And over there, a little farther, just past the Salute Church, is a palazzo, a palace. And up on the roof, this uh, particular palace is mounted six land cannons also aiming across at the little brown ships. So everybody see those? There's a total of 52 cannons scattered and hidden all over the three sims. Um, 
up high on top of the medicine building uh, over here to my left, which doesn't really fit into the Venice build, but you see the skyscraper? Very tall silver skyscraper up at the top. Yes, somebody has found the cannons up there. Good. So ideally, you can use these land cannons. They shoot super high, and there they are exploding on the white ships. So they drop for, down from the sky. And if you have enough people on your team, you could use the land cannons in conjunction with the pirate ship. And you'd have to think, well, you know, I've got, we've got 60 seconds. Um, some people need to shoot the land cannons earlier, you know, especially the mortars go really high. And then how can we use the cannons on this big pirate ship? So you see the pirate ship is starting to swing around. Can you shoot uh, directly forward maybe on, the, on the, the cannons in the front of the pirate ship? Yeah, we're trying to sink the little white ships or the little brown ships. So for instance, the forward cannons are pointing at the little white ships. Yep, see how they're starting to bear on the white ship? I think that one will soon catch fire. Okay. Now this probably appeals to the male gender more. I'm just guessing here. But um, the second level game is more of a social intrigue called Amore del Ducal, the love of the Duke. And I think that hopefully will appeal more to the female gender people participating who have a, maybe not, they're not so interested in blowing things up, but perhaps they're more interested in the social intrigues of who's trying to assassinate the Duke. Okay, so the idea here is to sink those little brown ships and the little white ships, and if you sink all six in 60 seconds, there's a password that'll um, be revealed, and it'll show you um, where to go for the next step to get to the next level of the game. So any questions about this level of the game? Okay, so this is mission one. I'll just go back there briefly. Pirate ship battle. And now on your screen you should see the Amore del Ducato. And this has some historical references. The Republic of Venice, the Doge of Venice, the Great Council of Venice, the Fieschi Conspiracy, which I think is the root of the word fiasco, Tiepolo Conspiracy. So again, someone's changing the timeline. You've been recruited to join the agency. We're, we're going to teleport into Venice. And the, uh, a portal has been prepared on the Nautilus submarine, hidden beneath the waters. So we could actually go there. Um, let me uh, teleport into the sub. Or at least I'll teleport down near the sub and we can walk. OK, and then I'll offer teleports to people. Uh, Anne and Heike and Laura and Val. OK. So if I didn't get everybody, please offer teleports to other people. Let's see who's been left behind. Uh, Bethany, can I offer a teleport? Yes. OK. Anybody else still there? Me. Kaylee, oh. Letty, OK. All right, I think we got everybody. Everybody here? OK, great. So again, flying would be an advantage. But if I make everybody walk, it could be more interesting to see how could they get up into this submarine. Now, some people know enough to double click and teleport. And notice that there's a land cannon actually mounted over there that shoots into the ship from below. OK, so when the uh, beacon lights up, it, shows how to get into the ship from the top, but I think we can actually get in from the bottom as well. So if you try jumping, we can get into the submarine. If 
It's going to be a little bit tricky, I think. I know my, my avatar is rather tall for this. <clears throat> so we're going to move through the submarine following the clues that are given to us in the Moodle course. Can everybody get in okay? No. Yep. Yep. There's Val. <laughs> okay, we're going to go up the steps. So we're in Captain Nemo's Nautilus submarine, another one of Allie's amazing builds. And the clues on the Moodle course tell you to find his private cabin, Captain Nemo's cabin. And over here past his, his pet seal is a painting of a sea turtle. So this is kind of like a mist game, you know, where you're exploring, following a clue. Everybody make it? No. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's teleport some people. It's not easy getting around in this tight submarine. Okay, so this is Captain Nemo's private cabin. Everybody here? Okay, well, we can give another chance for people to catch up. So you'll see here um, in front of me on the wall is a painting of a sea turtle. And if you hover o your cursor over it, you'll see it changes to a chair symbol, which you know is a sit, sit pose. And it says, portal to amore du del ducale. should be del. And if you click on it, it will take you to the next point. Let's see if it'll let me go. Yeah. So one at a time. Very good. <clears throat> so we've appeared in another location. Now this is designed to separate us from where we were. Kind of discombobulate us, could throw us off where we think, okay, now, now we have to kind of start again from ground zero. We don't know where we're at. We have to follow the directions to get to where we want to go. Everybody here yet? Yep. Okay. Let's see if anybody's not here. Heike. And Anne. Letty's here, Kaylee's here, Sue, and is Val here? Everybody here? Okay, so now we're kind of back to ground zero again. Um, we're going to start another mission. Now, the idea of the ship battle game, it might take an hour. You might have to come back multiple times. I've had groups of people work on this come multiple visits and still not succeeded. So it's definitely a difficult challenge. I hope it's not insurmountable. But um, I did provide a discussion forum so people can try to work their way through it. But once they finally overcome it, and they get the password to go to the next level and go through the, the Nautilus submarine. They show up at this point. Now they're kind of starting again from scratch. So they have to come up to speed on what they need to do. So you see um, behind, yes, there you go. There's a little uh, please touch to res a guest gondola. And somebody's already done that. I'll uh, go ahead and get started. I think I can do it. Yep. And so everybody should grab a gondola. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Okay, I think it's working. And we're going to head off to the right. So there's some directions on where to go. Luck luckily, these things go pretty slowly. So I don't think it'll get too crazy. I did supply some jet skis, which are totally not period, but probably really fun for university students to find. It's a kind of a hidden sign. Okay, so we're supposed to all progress along this wall. Again, we're kind of skulking along, trying to sneak into where we're supposed to be. 
<clears throat> again, kind of reinforcing that idea that we're not real accepted members, <clears throat> excuse me, accepted members yet. We need to uh, find a way to blend in and appear part of the, the next um, mission. So we yeah, go can, along I here. My secret. Um, yeah, they're seeing a lot of secrets. Um, but if they, if they, if you haven't been, if you haven't been given the secrets, then uh, you wouldn't be able to do this. So hopefully, um, I can control this and make sure that people actually have to overcome the the missions and get the passwords and progress through the Moodle course. That's my goal, anyways. Now it's true that they could post the answers um, on a forum, for example. So that's an issue that I'll have to deal with. Okay, now the clue on the Moodle course talks about how there's flower pots. And that's the signal that you're getting close to the secret door. So does anybody see the flowers up there um, above my head? There's two flower pots. Mm -hmm. And that is where there's supposed to be a secret door. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. So I'm going to stand and leap. No. <laughs> See if I can remember. Maybe it's this one. Voila. There it is. So did you see where I leapt through? Right there. Here's the secret door. So again, it's a bit of a challenge to find your way through. Take some exploring. I hope Sue doesn't uh, destroy that lovely dress. Yeah, try to jump through the wall right there. Yep, a little to your left, Kaylee. That's it right there. You got it. You're in. <laughs> I'll buy another one, Sue, if it gets wilted. Those boots, I think you're on your own. Those will probably float. OK, everybody's coming. <laughs> Angelica has a sea dew. <laughs> a very naughty woman. It's pink, though. It kind of suits you. <laughs> All right. So if everybody can find their way in the secret door, it's right here, right there. You see where I went in? Maybe I'll make it transparent just to make it easier. Edit texture transparency 80. There we go. Now you can see the door. <laughs> so it, it takes the, all of these games, all these missions are not designed to be too easy. They, they're designed to be challenging, tricky, you know, kind of the knowledge that people have to help each other with, like, you know, tell their group members where to go. I don't want it to be everything to be obvious or overly easy. I want it to be challenging. Uh, I want it to be um, difficult, something they have to work at and collaborate with and discuss with others. So this shop is La Dolce Sarto, and it's a, um, a dress and mask shop. Um, the idea is to get everybody dressed for the masked carnival, which is a big party that happened monthly. And apparently it got really popular, and people started wearing their masks um, all the time. And so that the city fathers had to ban the wearing of masks. And I think when they're gambling, you're not allowed to wear masks when you're gambling, because then who owes the money? So um, anyways, uh, the idea here is to supply, instead of pirate outfits, you should get into a lovely dress. So if you have an alternative, like a ballroom gown um, in your inventory, now's a good time to uh, put it on. I'm going to assume my mask duke look here. And you look lovely in that dress. Definitely a good look. And Val has a little mask on there. It's nice gilt and white with her blue eyes. <laughs> OK. Um, if you have a dress, great. Um, I haven't worked all this out yet, but there's a dress shop here. 
And uh, there's different dressing rooms for a bit of privacy. And eventually, I hope to have some free dresses available here. I have attracted a number of shopkeepers to bring their um, carnival-type dress shops here and mask shops here um, and given them free space to set up their stores. But I haven't really pushed them to give freebies yet. OK, is everybody ready to go on? All right. So it looks like some people are following along in uh, the Adobe Connect room. OK, so let's step outside the shop. So maybe I can flip over to the description here. OK, so now you see the screen uh, on my screen, the uh, roles for the RP game. Um, Tom Hardy leads you through the portal, helps you sneak to the Dulce Sarto shop, change your clothing. The mass carnival party is tonight, and you want to blend in. So Mademoiselle Dolce Villeno is one role, and the Duke is, I guess I'll play that role. And we have a Duchess role. Uh, Mademoiselle Donna Pericolosa, she owns a cabaret in the red light district. La Casa del Sole Nascente, the house of the rising sun, on a street called La Misericordia or Mercy Street. And there's an honest courtesan role, a servite monk, a proponent of the separation of church and state, a believer in the freedom of the press. So most of these are based on historical figures uh, as much as possible. Make it more interesting and have more value as uh, based on true history. Count Cagliostro, Sebastiano Veneer, the captain of the guard, and a new one I just put in this morning, I think it was, or maybe yesterday, Antonio Smeraldi, Il Fracao. And he is the architect who didn't quite get his design approved for the church. The church uh, was built along the designs of Baldassare Longena. Um, so this guy, Antonio Smeralda, is, he almost won, but he didn't. And he's really upset about it. Him and his buddy, Zambattista Rubertini. So these are real names, real people, and they really did come in second place on the competition to get the commission to build the Salute Church, which I'm sure was a huge amount of money and status. And Val is going to, uh, I wrote her in as Valibrian Greg, the owner of the Aldine Library. And if we get time, we'll, we'll head over there and take a look at the library. And there's a, a press as well, a Gutenberg press. And some more roles for courtesans. This is kind of an understudy role where people can just kind of uh, play around and, and, and don't have a serious role, but they could kind of observe and learn how to play this game and some roles for the public and guards. So ideally, you have people who are um, playing kind of a docent in a museum as a role play, and then other people are coming in as students, groups of students experiencing the gamified education, taking on the challenge. And then perhaps after they've done their student role, perhaps they would assume a role play and play it from the other side of the game. So everybody get the idea? All right, well, let's go for a walk. So this is Venice. Now, I did add a lot of trees. Trees are in short supply in Venice. But uh, I thought it'd be nice to have trees. Um, let's go over the new bridge. Um, to our right is the theater. Um, Let's let's uh, walk up on the bridge first. Now this is a, a bridge based on the uh, Academia bridge. Uh, I guess we're going to go over the edge in, into the other sim. Okay. Um, while we're up here, you can take a look and cam inside that um, the Grand Theater. It's modeled after the Teatro La Fenis, uh, Phoenix. It rises from the ashes. Every time it burns down, the Italians build it again. So if you want to cam in there, you can take a look. Now, I can't take any credit for building that. I bought it. Probably the most expensive single piece thing I've ever bought. I think it was around 40 US dollars. So the prices have gone up <laughs> in Second Life. People are starting to say, well, I can sell this stuff. Um, at real money. Um, but uh, it's a beautiful um, setting, and it does evoke the flavor of the real 
um, theater. But the real theater, for example, has five floors of box seats. From the floor level seats up, there's five floors. So it's huge and complex compared to the one here in Second Life. But um, I hope to do some drama in there, um, just kind of a multi-purpose space. And uh, use it as part of the other game levels. OK, shall we walk on? Maybe I'll jump off the edge of this bridge. OK, so now we're kind of sneaking along here. Skinny little sidewalk. So yeah, I built this bridge inspired by the real one. The bridge um, by the academia, the it's an um, art gallery. And I'd love to offer more period art. You'll see in the palazzo that I've set up some period art. Here's some vendors selling fruits and wine. And we can just briefly take a look here at the, uh, the bridge, the Ponte di Rialto. So if you walk up here, we'll just briefly look at some of the shops. So I haven't filled up all these stalls yet, but there's all kinds of sellers. This lady here, this uh, old crone, um, my favorite. She uh, she mutters, and the crow makes some cawing noises. See, I think she cackles too. I don't know if any of you guys have any, um, there's a cackle, yeah. So I don't know if anybody wants to uh, ever donate or set up something here. You, if you have any ideas for a good uh, little market to put in one of these stalls, feel free. I'd be happy to give you builder access if you want to set up a, a little stall here. Jewelry would be good, a shop that sells jewelry. All right, well, let's go on back down the other way. Sorry if I bump into anybody. Laura, are you still with us? All right. So let's uh, walk along over here to the Palazzo. Oh, and here you can see one of the shops. This is a shop that um, a, a, one of the women from the marketplace who runs an actual shop on the marketplace, Picasso. She set up a little storefront here. Um, hoping to sell some masks. I'm hoping that eventually I'll get enough traffic here uh, on a regular basis where some of the sh shop owners can make some money and see some augmentation to their income from their marketplace revenue. Okay, so that's just one little shop. And you can see the um, canal. Oh, there, there goes the gondola. We'll wait for it to come back around. Let's step into the Palazzo. So the Duke's Palace is intended to be kind of a community center. The ground floor is pretty much open to the public. You can see over here on the left, you've got a bar and some, some cheap food, you know, just basic for the common folk. Um, nothing too fancy, making bread and various seafood dishes. Um, there's some tea sets over there. And then on the other side, I'll just sort of leap over. There's some clerk clerk little. areas. Sorry, Angelica. Like catch photos Clerking areas. <laughs> OK, well, I'll wait a bit for things to rest. There is a lot of prims here. I like prims because they don't fade as much when you step back. So if we're getting pictures from any kind of distance, prim-based furniture holds its shape really well. But obviously, you know, it eats up your prim budget. Um, over here on this side, you see some clerking areas. So the people who take keep track of contracts and um, um, all the goods being brought into Venice um, as a major maritime port and um, duties to be paid. Um, there's a class here for teaching sewing and using a loom to make clothing. And um, a schoolroom for the kids to learn how to read and write. And of course, learn how to operate a cannon. Very important. <laughs> um, some early 
period um, science, so chemistry over there on the tables, some instruments for drawing and cutting and shaping and painting and pounding. And you see some art on the walls there that's period specific. Back to the year 1600. And you've got your pirate he's probably running a privateer. And he's brought in some uh, gold he wants to exchange for doubloons, maybe. So just kind of throwing various things in. Um, trying to make it an interesting environment to explore, look around, role play. Yeah, just kind of really throwing everything in there and see what sticks. Shall we go upstairs to the uh, fine dining? Sure, Sue. So um, the idea here with the role play is that the courtesans could easily get into the ground floor. But they were really interested in the wealthy men who often spend their time up in, on the upper floors of the palazzo, in the fine dining, or in meetings, or at the ballroom. And access to this, these areas, are generally controlled by security. So you have to get past these security people. Now, um, this guy in purple might be the captain of the guard. Or we could use a real person. Right now, he's just a NPC. And this, uh, this other guy here with the green coat is kind of a bureaucrat. You know, I haven't really figured out exactly what he'll do. But these people control access to the doorway. And if you can distract them, maybe it takes two different people to distract them successfully, then you can sneak into the dining room and talk to people up here. And here you can start to hear the music from the Spinetta. I mean, you should hear some crowd noise come in. Uh, lots of period paintings on the walls and fine dining so you can sit here and order food. So if you want to try it, you can have a seat and click on the table to get some uh, a food menu. So there's it's, I'm clearing the table and roast for four. So pretty good table, lots of choices for different kinds of food. And I think you can get a fork too which would obviously help me be more realistic. What else? Yummy bread, seafood for four. So this is the fine dining area. And I've recently added a, a trade negotiation area over here. With the idea that um, often in Venice you'd have to have two groups maybe representing different countries. And they would meet here and hammer out an agreement. So I'm, I'm trying to multi-purpose here. I might do trade negotiation simulation um, and training for people that, to do trade negotiations. Apparently, there's a big demand ever since Brexit um, has broken up all these trade deals. And so all the people are saying, we need to train our youth how to do uh, trade negotiation. So that's why I set up these tables in this kind of configuration. So people can practice sim a simulation where one team is trying to push the other team to accept a compromise. And they would role play and play out the parts of you know aggressively asking for these items. And the other team has to kind of you know consider them and go off and work as a, you know, in private, decide how they're going to compromise and come back and make a, a counter offer. Letty, can you uh, turn off your speak button? because we can hear you typing. Any questions so far? All right, let's go upstairs to the ballroom. Can you hear the crowd noise? Oh, I think they're trapped in there. You have to click it from the outside. Uh, mosquito. All right. <laughs> Can you guys hear the crowd noise and the spinetta? So I, eventually, I'd love to get a um, string quartet. Live musicians would be great. Got some mosquitoes here in Hong Kong. Sorry. Ah, uh, Heike needs a TP. All right. Let me get upstairs, Heike, and I'll send you a TP. There's Laura. And 
TP for Heike. Anybody else need a TP? Is everybody, we, anybody get left behind? Maybe I should take off my mask. It's probably more personable without it. Okay, so now we're in another area where people could mingle and try to get past security. Um, there's some backstory here. These statues <clears throat> show the return of the messenger. So the, the backstory is that the Duke got so rich by his messengers coming back from other countries on these missions, kind of like a Marco Polo. And they, he's, they, he comes back with offers for trade. And this is a statue commemorating the return of the messenger. When you assassinate people, I miss that one, Sue. Oh, the blood-soaked boot prints. <laughs> I didn't see that. But uh, there is going to be assassination in the game um, because somebody's trying to uh, assassinate the Duke. And uh, the goal of this game is to figure out who. And one of the clues is that the uh, Duchess keeps sneaking off. And there's several places she goes off to sneak into the tower. There's these secret doorways. And then I recently set up another another clue where um, there's a bomb planted in the back of the Salute Church and uh, someone's trying to give the Duchess the plan for where the bomb is located. So this is the ballroom and you can see it's got a lovely marble floor and some period paintings on the wall. And I just put in the new chandeliers which look a little bit electric but they do put out a nice light. And there's a hammered dulcimer here. I think that's that's playing right now. That's the hammered dulcimer period instrument. And valves on the spinetta. And I'd love to get more musicians. And maybe some kind of dances, uh, group dances. I don't know, minuets maybe? I'm not sure exactly. I'll have to look it up. Um, and then there's one more room I put in fairly recently, about a week ago. Bethany's almost there. Go ahead and open that door, Bethany. Eventually, you'll have to barter or distract that, that guard in order to open the door. I haven't figured out how to implement that yet. Now, this is a government room where the Duke meets with the Council of Ten. So the Council of Ten was a, a, a layer of um, the Republic of Venice, the bureaucracy, just below the Duke. And here, this room is designed for him and perhaps the Duchess or another... Uh, um, government official to meet with the group of ten. So you have uh, portraits of past doges or um, doges from uh, nearby um, cities like Padua. So this is kind of a council room. So again, just trying to create a very sticky, rich environment with lots of things to explore. Um, I hope eventually to have up to 10 levels to this game. So there's lots of places to go and explore. Um, we put in a cabaret recently. Um, I know I can show you the print shop and the uh, Gutenberg Press. I'm glad you like it, Sue. And we put, I, I put a fair amount of time. I started in January building Venice. So it's been a, a labor of love kind of laying out lots of different things to do and places, uh, settings for uh, different kinds of activities. And this could be where the Duke is um, in a meeting when you need to try to sneak in and, and talk to him and try to make contact with him, which would be difficult. So uh, ideally, this would be a, a busy ballroom with musicians and dancers. Maybe I can get a bunch of bots. I'm not sure. Hopefully, no tears. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be a frustrating game for some people. And uh, if it's difficult, it wouldn't surprise me if some people <laughs> did, were brought to tears by uh, the challenge of trying to figure out, kind of like a mist game, you know, what's up, what should I do? It's designed to be an ambiguous game um, where there's no clear objectives, no clear path to those objectives. Um, and it's hopefully going to require group communication, and collaboration um, and exchanges of perspectives to figure out uh, what is what we are supposed to do here. Let's walk over to the right here and check out a couple of shops. There's a, a few nice shops. 
Um, this is um, the Tierra de Ombra. Now, this lady has a really nice um, shop in her own full region in Second Life, but she agreed to set up a little shop here. It's a little bit um, out of period, right? Because it has uh, you click on this and it goes through the different masks, like TV screens. But oh well, I'm not going to be too strict about the period. But she did a good job with the the textures on the walls, and um, you can buy these things, these masks from her. So real time, you could buy different things, and perhaps, hopefully, she'll make some money. Yeah, she does great work. A genuine Italian woman. I've, I went to her full region and um, spoke with her, and she has a lovely accent. Okay, shall we come out and go and look at another shop or two? Then maybe we could ride the um, gondola. An Indian restaurant. <laughs> could be. I mean, people came from all over to uh, live in uh, Venice and partake in Venice. Now, I'm seeing these buildings missing. The upper parts of these buildings are missing. Does anybody else see that? Or do they look normal to you, the ones we're standing in front of? Oh, well, it's weird how Second Life does that sometimes, where either something disappears completely or it's just uh, just for me. So here's another shop put together. Um, and they these all these masks were custom made just for this store. And she hopes to eventually sh um, sell these masks. Trying to remember. Uh, yeah, Serafina Stormcrow, or Mrs. Coffee, as she's often nicknamed. She had a boyfriend boyfriend named Mr. Coffee for a long time. So again, lovely um, textures and a look. Um, and I'm hoping that these kind of shops really appeal to the uh, the the female uh, participants in the games. I'm not sure how much the the men will be impressed by the lovely textures and masks. But I'm hoping to appeal, you know, I'll have different levels that appeal to both sides um, of the perspectives on gender issues. I'm not sure how to really phrase that without sounding sexist. But um, I, I want everyone to find something appealing, whether it's blowing things up or trying on lovely dresses and masks. Um, so I guess it doesn't have to fall strictly by gender. But uh, the idea is to cover a broad spectrum of intrinsic desires. Does that make sense? From shooting and blowing things up to lovely outfits and lovely masks and history specific paintings here on the wall. She did a great job. Intrinsic desires, definitely. Um, if I can tap into intrinsic desires and then somewhat indirectly tying it in with objectives like language acquisition or history or drama, then uh, I hope to uh, create an environment which results in the um, achievement of objectives and still the students are motivated by their own desire to have fun. So down here is the Aldine Press. Um, a couple of Gutenberg, well, a bunch of presses really, six. But two here in the back work pretty well. You're welcome to try them. You just uh, click on them, and then they open and close. So see, click on this one. It says, go up or go down. Go down, and it can presses. The, um, uh, uh, by the way, this is um, taking pictures, perhaps? I think so. I'm ever so sorry. I but uh. So this uh, technology was um, adapted from grape presses, right, for crushing grapes to make wine when Gutenberg designed his press. And the original typesetting here to make your early books. And lots and lots of books. So we'll, we'll go next door. Val has um, contributed a lot of the posters here on the wall, which are all period-based etchings. Val, if you want to contribute any information here about these posters, people in period dress, 
different classes, different purposes, merchants, I guess, soldiers, um, church officials. I'm not sure what you'd call that. The popes, the bishops, not popes, bishops and cardinals, right? And if we go next door, you can see the, yeah, various language learning, um, Italian, English, you could set up all kinds of things here. So let's go next door. If you can squeeze through that giant dress <laughs> to the community library. And you can see the giant book that um, Val constructed beyond Gutenberg. Again, not very period correct, but pretty amazing. <laughs> the guards will defend your dress and your honor. So here's the giant book, and it goes from clay tablets and how Gutenberg invented movable type to bring writing to the masses. And you click on the right side to progress through the pages. Handwritten manuscripts were costly and time consuming. Yep. Where we're going in digital culture, yes. So there's Johannes Gutenberg. Interesting, I'm working with a German guy named Johannes right now. Post Gutenberg era, knowledge formed through secondary orality. So I guess listening to videos, would that be a correct way to interpret that, Val? If listening to a video would be secondary orality? Book is no longer the king of the hierarchy. And where is knowledge? And then Google and social media. Now we must decide for ourselves. So there's a good existential question at the end of the book. So that's Val's lovely contribution. And uh, you can see here on the table in front of me, I've gotten some, uh, some various prints, if you can zoom in on them. Really nice colored text from the period here on the table, books. And I think some of them actually came from the Aldine Press. I've just sort of been collecting things and putting them wherever. So this is my take on a, a bookstore slash library. Yeah, Kaylee, it's been fun to bring in all sorts of things from all sorts of places. Um, I must say, Allie, um, bless her soul, has contributed so much to the world of Second Life, the, the ships, the pirate gear, she has mermaid stuff that I haven't even tapped into. But um, it's fun to set up a historical place and do a little research and import some textures, you know, all kinds of things. So any questions about the community bookstore? Uh, we can step out to the canal and maybe catch a ride on the gondola. Yeah, we're, we're really not going to do the role play, Anne, so thanks for coming. But um, I can show you the cabaret. Would anybody like to see the new cabaret? I'll, uh, I'll zip over there and offer you some teleports. Okay. All right, not sure who's still Laura, Letty, and Sue, Val. Is that everybody? Okay, so you can see we're in a bit of the red light district, literally, at the end of a long, lonely canal, kind of uh, in the Hmm, I wouldn't say the bad section of town, but certainly the less traveled. And uh, 
So this is a bit of a um, cabaret slash bordello, you know. Check out the wallpaper, that rich, red, opulent look. <laughs> yes, and very nice. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's not strictly period, but um, some of the pictures on the walls depict um, bordellos, paintings of people in bordellos from ancient times. Um, Women, the, uh, the, the apparently the courtesans of Venice were famous for their decolletage, as in their cleavage from their outfits, um, and that was a an amazing thing that people from all over the this part of the world talked about the beautiful courtesans with their outrageous outfits. So again, uh, I hope to incorporate this in another level of the game. Uh, different kind of social intrigue, a different place, a different setting. Um, but at, at this point, I'm still kind of building out the second level, so I have a ways to go. But um, I've had a lot of help from friends. Uh, Niesa, my estate manager, laid out a lot of this place. Just from descriptions, um, she would find, we, we would talk and discuss, and then she would go through wallpapers and show me various types of wallpaper and then I'd buy it for her. So it's kind of fun. It's just kind of like real life, you know, where um, she wants to decorate and I have the funds and she gets to decorate and I buy, I, I buy the stuff. So <laughs> it, it, both, uh, it works for both of us and she loves to decorate. Mm, any other questions? I'm trying to think what else you might want to see. There's a there's a merry-go-round or a carousel, a holiday. Uh, let me get back to that it's in chat. Hotels where one could stay. Spend a virtual weekend in Venice. Now, I did offer, um, I have offered to several people if they want to um, move in here um, and have a flat here. And that would kind of be, you know, have a weekend here and a weekend there. Um, but it's an interesting idea where you could actually rent out a hotel space. Because it's university, um, I don't really look to make any money, but I think it'd be great if people wanted to come and live here and um, get into the role plays. I haven't worked too hard at, um, at trying to bring people in for permanent role plays. Um, I've put out a few feelers, but eventually I would like to get 10 or 20 people who come here often and role play and therefore kind of flesh out the game. They wouldn't have to be directly involved in the gameplay, but just by living their lives in Second Life and socializing amongst each other, it would provide that background of all those other people that you don't talk to, but nonetheless, they're in your in your sight line, they're in the room, they're doing things, just like in real life. I mean. What percentage of the people that we see in a train station do we actually talk to? But there are a few people that we definitely want to talk to, you know, like uh, significant others are for on a secret mission, right? We have to find that special person, make contact. So, well, I hope, uh, I hope this has given you an idea of what I'm working on. Um, and the idea of tapping into intrinsic needs, intrinsic desires uh, for the purpose of gamified education. Um, and the use of Second Life integrated with Moodle to control access, to um, provide hints, and um, also to get people to do the surveys. Um, so instead of hoping that 20% of the people do my survey, I can pretty much get 100% of the people who want to go from the first level to the second level to do at least part of the survey and then another part and another part. Uh, my email, uh, well, I'll put it here in chat, brant at knutson.se. That's my uh, email. Thank you, Sue, for your kind words. Um, glad you enjoyed it, Bethany. And thank you for coming. Sorry we didn't really do the role play much, but I think it's just more of a walkthrough at this point. Still a ways to go. Angelica, thank you for coming. Lovely dress. And I've appreciated your help many times in the past. Another kind German lady. 
Letty, you're welcome. Please come back anytime. Bring groups of students if you like. It's open, public land. Um, ideally, um, you can come as much as you like. If you want to bring a group of students and you want them to try the, the game, I'm happy to set that up um, and um, bring in a group of people to try the pirate ship battle game and then move on into the next step. Um, I'd like to see if they can do it. Um, and then we'll have to build out the second level and maybe run it once a week at first. And then if, if it picks up steam and we get enough people involved, maybe we could offer it once a day. That would be awesome if we could do it once a day. But um, I'm not sure if I can achieve these goals. But uh, if you don't try, you know, you'll never get there. So SJSU, uh, San Jose State University. Is that right, Bethany? So yeah, if you have students um, that want to come, I'd be happy to host them. Um, the more the merrier. I'd love to get a bunch of different teachers, bring in groups of students here. Um, the pirate ship battle game is pretty much ready to go. I've worked a couple of years on that one. Um, and then I've been developing the Moodle uh, integration to control access and developing the survey items. Um, and as I flesh out the second level, and I'll start working on the third, um, I think I'm leaning towards kind of a cat burglar experience for the third level, sneaking on the rooftops of the, uh, the Venice, uh, Venetian townhouses. All right. Yes, please explore Moodle. Um, you have to go do those steps to go through. You have to do the consent. You have to do the demographic survey. Watch the videos. And then it'll open up step by step. So yeah, please do keep in touch. And I hope to, um, you can bring students. Um, please uh, take my email address and um, contact me. And if you want to. Uh, Bring in a group of students, and I can help uh, coordinate and facilitate that. I'd love to. Um, anybody in Adobe Connect have any questions for me? I think it's worked pretty well where you can watch um, the action on Adobe Connect or in Second Life. Thank you, ladies, for dressing up. Appreciate your, your efforts. A lot of you look really amazing. <laughs> Bethany, that is an amazing dress. I'm glad it worked well for people. <laughs> the mask, Sue. Val, thanks for coming. Always appreciate your support. I hope not too late at night for you, Laura, Kaylee, Angelica. Great outfit. And Letty, lovely look with your mask. Well, thanks, All right, guys. For well, stay in touch. Nice. Thank you for coming. That was really fantastic. Thank you. And we'll keep in touch. And you will send me the uh, recording, Rand? Yes, I will. I will send you the link to the recording. That's great. Uh -huh. And I'll send you the pictures I took, maybe for all, to publish it on our website. OK. Great. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, please uh, let me know if you have groups of students that want to come. I'll be happy to share the recording with you. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. It's still a work in progress. Um, the role play is going to take some support from people who are interested in doing role plays. But um, as I said, if you don't uh, keep chipping away at the statue, you'll never create your masterpiece.